Hey everybody, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a game called Between Two Cities Essential Edition. Between Two Cities Essential Edition is a reprint of this game from, I don't know when, a, a while ago. I don't know when the original was published. But this is designed by Ben Rossett and Matthew O'Malley, published by Stonemaier Games. Plays one to seven players solo and two players are variant, so it's officially three to seven. And it plays in about 30 minutes, which is probably true. Like I said earlier, this is a reprint of Essential Edition of Between Two Cities. When that initially was released, it was Between Two Cities and Between Two Cities Capitals, which is the expansion. This version has all of that mixed into one box. There may be more. I haven't played the basic, the previous edition, so I'm not going to discuss the differences, but just know base game and expansion are included in this one. So what you're doing in this game, this is a cooperative game of sorts, where you're going to be working with the player to your left and to your right to build left and to your right, now I don't even know my directions, to build cities. I'll probably call them castles through the playthrough because we also have a game called Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig, and we played that a lot. So if I say that, I apologize, but you're building cities. The rub here is you're going to get points for your lowest city that you build with your neighbor. So you're trying to be balanced in your approach because you don't want one to be worth 100 points, one to be worth 40 because your score will be 40. Tile laying game, each tile scores differently. There's adjacency bonuses, all that kind of thing. So that's enough talking about it. Let's go on the table, check it out. All right, so here's a game of Between Two Cities Essential Edition, all set up for three players. Now to set up, you're gonna give each player one of these score reference cards. But I'll just have one over to the side here. Each player is gonna take one of these play mats here, orient, oriented, orientated in the correct uh, direction. So I've done all that. And then each player is going to take a player marker. So I have the Eiffel Tower, I have the St. Louis Arch, and the Pyramids. And then each player is going to draw nine tiles from the box, which we've done there. And you can put your token on the top for now. Okay. If you're playing with the advanced variant, you'll set these districts out like this. Off to the side here. And then you're going to put cards next to them like this to see who has the biggest district so kind of like this and then that's going to give you extra points at the end of the game for whoever has the mo the biggest of those districts meaning total number of tiles on their mat okay but i'm not playing with that right now but that's in there and the only other rule here is if the house and the factory ever come out together you have to get rid of the second one that's drawn because they can't be together so just know that is an extra bonus that you can do, um, but I'm not playing with that. I just wanted to show it to you. It's it's fine, but the base game in itself is compelling enough. So the way this game works is this is a drafting game, but the interesting thing about this game is this player is going to be working on this city and this city. This player is working on these two, and this player is working on these two, and your lowest score across both of your cities is your winning score. So you're trying to work with your, your opponent to keep both of your castles kind of, or your cities kind of even to score some points. Cause you don't want to have one that's worth 90, one that's worth 50, cause that 50 is your score. Okay, so the way the game works is on your turn, you're gonna look at your tiles and you're gonna pick two of them to play. You're gonna play one into the castle to your right, one into the castle of your left. So tiles are, there are all these different tiles. There's I forget what these shopping centers, I believe. So this player has three shopping centers, houses, taverns, offices, another shopping center, another tavern, and a house, okay? There's also parks, um, factories, and civ civic buildings, all right? So these are all gonna score differently, and I'll kind of talk about that as I'm playing them. So first thing they wanna do is they wanna put one of these yellows on this one. Then they're gonna put one of these taverns over here, okay? Then they take all their tiles and they pass them 
to the player on their right. So they'll take their tiles, put them down, put them under that player's token so they know that those have been passed. Then that player is going to play a tile here and here. They have a tavern. They have some factories, a couple houses, a different tavern, shopping mall, another tavern, and an office. Okay. So they have no idea what that player played, but they want to start collecting a factory. So they want to play a factory into this fact, this city here. And you know what? They're just going to go ahead and play a factory in this city as well. Then they take these tokens, or these tiles, put them face down to this player, because we're passing to the right. I think that's right, yes. And then this player will play into this one and to that one. So let's see here. They have shopping center, factory, shopping center, factory, civic building, factory, business, business, business. All right. They really want a, ci a civic building. So they're going to play a civic building here. And they don't know what anybody else played. So they're going to play a factory over here. Then these tiles will be passed to the player on their right and will now be these player's tiles. All right, then once that's done, the players are gonna to work together to place tiles at each of the cities, but I'm just gonna do it and place them as it would kind of work. So this player would be working with that player to place these here. Now, the rules are in this are a little different in the first round. First round, one of the tiles has to be placed on one of these four spaces on the mat. Where there's landscape, you cannot build there. If there's a bridge or a tunnel, those two spaces are considered adjacent to each other. Okay. So what they're going to do here is they're going to put this factory right there. Now the other tile has to be placed adjacent to another tile that's already out. So they'll put this one right there. Okay. Then we'll go to this one. So they have a civic building and a tavern. All right. So the, let's talk about some scoring. Factories, whoever has the most factories in their town, every factory is worth four points. Second is third, third place, and everybody else, two points per factory. The shopping malls, you want to get them in a, a column or a row. If you can get five of them, they're worth 20 points. That's pretty good. And this also shows you how many of each of them there are. Um, the, the taverns, this one, if you can get all four different types of taverns, there's music, bar, eating, and sleeping. Uh, you're going to get 17 points. So now if they have that, they want to start doing that. The civic building, they're going to score one of four, a um, couple different ways. If they're by themselves, not adjacent to anything that they want to be adjacent to, they're worth a point. If they're adjacent to one of the plus signs, so in this case, it's a park or a factory, three points. If they're adjacent to both of them, six points. If they're adjacent to the negative, which in this case is a business, one point okay so they're going to score based on what they're next to and i think what they want to do is let's put this one on a corner like this and we're going to go ahead and put this one right there and you can have a five by five grid so now i'm one two three four i can either go here or i could go here with my last one okay then we're going over to this one this player has two factories so i went over the factory and they're gonna just start building in some factories here. So let's put a factory there and a factory there. All right, done. Now we're gonna do all that again. We'll take two more tiles. So you've seen all these tiles, so I'm just gonna place something. So they want to do, they see that they want a park or a factory. So they're gonna put a factory here and they're gonna put a shopping mall here. All right, and then they will pass this way. This player will do, they have a shopping mall, they do. They're gonna play a shopping mall there. And a factory, they want, they're gonna play another shopping mall right there. And then they'll pass over here. And then this player will play a tile to both of these. And they will, they need uh, a factory or a park 
which I don't have any parks in these first round of nine that I drew. So I don't have a factory, but maybe we'll get one. So they're gonna play a business, and I'll explain how that works in a minute. And they're gonna play a sleeping over here. Pass, done, all right. So now let's flip, we have two of these. So like I said before, we want these to be in a straight line. So they're gonna place these like this. That's a lot of points right now. That is 10 points, pretty good. This one, this player has a factory and a business. So we're gonna put the factory here. We don't want the business to be next to the civic center because that would negate some points. So we will put it right here. Yeah, we can put it right here, that's adjacent. So we'll put it right there. All right, I think that's considered adjacent. I believe so, that, that should be allowed. Then this player, that's how I always play. So let's do this. They have a sleeping area and they wanna put that. They wanna put this one, put the sleeping area here and they're gonna put this right there. All right, and that's how the game's gonna keep going through this round. You're gonna use all these tiles I'm just going to kind of simulate that. So you, you'll take two more rounds with these tiles, and the last one will get discarded. So let's just say I did that. We have all the appropriate tiles on our board. I know we don't, but I just want to show you how the rest of it works. Then we're going to move into round two. In round two, each player is going to get three of these duplex tiles. And these duplex tiles are the exact same tiles that we've been playing with, but there's two of them. So this is a shopping center and a factory connected to each other. Just like every other tile in the game, they all have to be oriented the proper way and you have to follow adjacency rules to play them. So you gotta keep that in mind. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick one of two, two of these to play to both of the castles that are, I keep calling them castles because we had that game too, both of the cities that are next to you. So this is these, play, these players that are gonna play on both of these. Um, these go there. I don't wanna get confused. All right, so they're gonna play, I definitely want to get a park. So they wanna keep a park. They'll put a park in this one. And then they're gonna play this one over here. All right, and then this one gets discarded. This player will do this one. And this one, discarded. And this player will do This one and ooh, this one. All right, discard. Then we reveal and we place them just like normal. So they're gonna place this one right here because you want those to be in a long line, which we've got going on here. And they're gonna place this one. Ooh, this is a little trickier. Um, I think I could go right here because that would be considered adjacent to that one. So that should be fine. And then this player will do a bed and a house. So let's do a bed and a house here. And a factory and an eatery. We're gonna put that right there. All right, so now they've established their five by five grid. So they have five this way. So they can't go any wider. They can just go up and down. And then this player, again, this is gonna be a little cluttered because my table is small and this game takes up qu quite a bit of room. And then this player has a park. Now, parks, we haven't explained. A park is going to score for however many you can get connected. One single park is worth two. Two park squares is worth eight. Then three is 12. Everything after three just goes up by a single point. So you wanna at least get three, but the more you get, maybe create another block of three because that would be extra better points for you. I think what we want to do is let's do let's do ooh, let's do this. So we'll put that here like this, and then ooh, this is tricky. We will do this like this. So there's my five by five grid: one, two, three, four, five. All right. So I can go down or up. I just can't go this way. All right. Then after that, you're going to draw nine more tiles per person. 
and you're going to pass to the left. Once your city is full, which again, we'd have four more tiles out here, then you're going to be scoring. And you'll use this cool scoring pad here to score each castle. Um, or you can use this one sheet to do all of them, which is fine. If you're playing with the advance, you'll score the points for the districts there. See which castle gave you that, or city. I keep saying castle, sorry. City gave you that. Then you're gonna score factories. So whoever has the most factories, each factory is worth four, then three, then two. Shopping malls, your lines, rows and columns, you're gonna get a pile of points for that. Each tile can only be counted one time. So like if I had this column and this another one over here, whatever this tile is could only be counted for one of the, the rows or columns. Parks, you're gonna score however many there are connected, write down the score. Uh, the taverns, multiple different ta taverns, you get more points. So if I can get all four, 17. Businesses, those are just points. So the more of those you have in your city, the more points you're gonna get, and you get an extra point if they're next to a tavern. Uh, houses, I don't know if I explained houses. Uh, I might have forgotten that because I think I just played one. Houses are going to score you one to five points based on what other type of, type of buildings that you have. So if I had all five of these types, shopping center, um, factory, tavern, business, and park, every one of my houses would be worth five. But the tricky part is if your house is adjacent to a factory, all that gets negated and it's only worth one point because who wants to live next to a loud factory, noisy factory? Civic buildings, they're going to score based on the symbols on the cards. So you figure all that up, put the number in there, add the total, whichever one of your cities has the lowest score is your final score. And whoever has the highest score after all that is the winner. That's how you play Between Two Cities Essential Edition. Let's go at the top, see what we think about it. All right, well, that was Between Two Cities Essential Edition, or what I've lovingly been calling Between Two Castles again. I don't know why. So let's talk about the components. First off, it has two rule books. It has a basic rule book, which is amazing. Tells you how to play all the variants. Gives you a breakdown of the rules on the back, which is fantastic. Great rule book. There's a, an Atoma solo rule book with some two player variants. I haven't done anything with this. I probably won't because this game shines at more players. But if you're into that, that's cool. Um, the artwork on the box is fantastic. Love it. It's a gorgeous box. I don't know if it's in the camera shot, but gorgeous box. Fantastic art. Looks a much better, in my opinion, than the initial one. These play mats that it comes with. We moved on from the rule book in case you didn't get up, pick up on that. Are fantastic. There's gorgeous art. I think it's from Beth Sobel. The art on these. They're gorgeous. There's a whole bunch of them. They're all laid out differently. Different adjacencies. Fantastic. So cool component there. Um, a whole bunch of these monuments. I don't know the names of all of them. The three that I used, I looked them up. Um, a bridge from somewhere. This one. This one. Again, they say I'm in the rule book. I just don't know. This is a palace, a golden palace, I believe. <laughs> Hence, it's gold. And then the three that I showed you. Really cool. Tons of sheets for scoring, which is cool. I like that. The advanced cards are really, you know, the tiles are whatever for the advanced mode, but the cards are have a lot of flourish on the back or on the front. Just a tile with, you know, some extra art. Those look really nice. Nice quality cards. Now let's talk about the main component, which are the tiles. Tiles are really nice quality. They have a cool, some filigree on the back. And they're really easy to see. It's like an aerial view of the building. Gives you the icon, tells you how it scores. Um, really good art. I mean, they're just buildings, but they're really nice. They look good. Looks good on the tableau when you're done. They're thematic, like houses don't want to be next to factories. Parks want to be a big park area, which is cool. Love all that. The duplicate tiles are really neat too, because they're coming in different, like th this one goes long ways, horizontal. This one's vertically, which is cool. So you never know which kind you're going to get, where you're going to have room on your board. So that's really neat there. Really nice tiles too. They have a different color back, in case you couldn't tell that they're doubles, but there's that. Box inserts pretty good. It holds all the tiles. No complaints there. Good components. So let's talk about this game. So like I was saying in the overview, we have Between Two Castles and Mad King Ludwig. We've played that a lot. They're very similar, but I think where this one shines, in my opinion, is this one's 
a more simple game, easier for people to jump into and play. Castles of Mad King Ludwig has a ton of different buildings, different way they score. The scoring in that can be kind of a nightmare. I think there is a cool unofficial app that will take a picture of it and score it for you. But without that, it can take longer to score than play the game. This one is much faster to score. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles. You're going to score them. And the factories are easy. Whoever has the most factories gets four points per factory. Well, a lot of them are easy. It's just however many you have in a row or a column or whatever. Scoring's way easier. So much simpler. Even the advanced thing, the districts, you're going to see who has the most of those two types of buildings. They get nine. The other players get three. If there's a tie, you divide it in half. Give each player both. You know, half of it. It's... I like the simplicity. I love complex games. I should like Castles of Mad King Ludwig, but I think the Castles of Mad King, or between two Castles of Mad King Ludwig, I think the Castles of Mad King Ludwig theme holds that one back a little bit because it's weird. It's trying to get weird and weird scoring, and the expansion adds these secret passageways and rooms that point to other rooms to score. It just gets, it gets in its own way, I think. This one's clean. This one's simple. But it's a ton of fun. It looks great on the table. And it gives you the same feeling of that one, but in a smoother, cleaner, easier to teach package. And I appreciate that. And the scoring takes five minutes compared to 20. So all that being said, this is a fantastic game. I like this one better than the other one. And I'm going to give this a BGM except the seal. This is going to get an 8 out of 10 on BGG, which is a 4 out of 5 wrenches on an arbitrary wrench scale. That means absolutely nothing. But we like to give it the games that we enjoy. And that's what I'm going to do. So that is Between Two Cities Essential Edition from Stonemaier Games. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and as always, keep gaming.